the two of us. It's amazing. Babe, I would marry you even if there were other men on earth. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> sweet. That's really beautiful. Excuse me. Get something out of my pocket. Okay. Don't mind so I got to get my room. <laughs> okay. Now we're ready to go. So God made us, Adam and Eve. Just but us. It's, this, it's, it's just nice us. Life. It was awesome. We were in this garden and we enjoyed everything. We had drink and it was just... This is alcohol juice, right? Well, mine is grape juice, but I don't know what it is. So we, uh, we were walking around enjoying the garden and we had this relationship with God like... like None other. I've never had it since, actually. What we had with God was we had life. This is a blue, I'm cracking up, a blue piece of cloth that represents life. We had life with God. There was no tiredness, no lack of energy. And we also sensed God's favor. Like we were just enjoying each other and we were actually naked. That was kind of weird. We're not naked now, but um, we were naked and we didn't know it. We, we didn't see each other's bodies. We, we just enjoyed God and we sensed his favor and, and we were happy. The red stands for a whole heart. It was happy. We were happy. We weren't sad. We weren't scared. We were happy. So we had life. We felt God's favor. We felt that he was, he was proud to be our dad. And then we had life. That's what I said that one. And then the white represents peace. That we had this relationship with God where we had peace. We could see God face to face and we walked with him. How many of you think it's kind of strange to talk about God? Like you can't see him. Like how do you know it's true, right? Yeah, it's kind of strange. We saw God. So trust me when I'm talking about this, right? And all this is written down in the Bible. It's, it's what actually happened at the beginning and we had all these things perfect with God and we just enjoyed it it was really awesome wasn't it, it was. Yeah, we it was never had any arguments right? no we trusted each other I never thought she was being critical of me you know I just thought she just loved me and had my best in mind and she did the same right yeah this is what God gave us he gave us peace he gave us life he gave us favor. How many of you like when your parents smile at you and think, oh, that's, that's like, you're my son, you're my child. That's fun, isn't it? That's what we felt with God. And God gave everything we needed for life. And he gave it to us. You see this bag? It's kind of a funny bag. It's, it's got a zipper. It's an empty bag, right? And so when God made us, this bag stands for responsibility. God gave us responsibility and he gave everything we needed and he put it in the bag and so we were responsible to cultivate that life and he gave that to us just I give you happiness I give you joy I delight in you and he gave us everything we needed and it says that the, the Bible says there were two trees in this garden it actually says there were a lot of trees but we're gonna talk about two trees there was a tree of life and then there's this tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God so cared that we have life forever that he said, don't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil or you'll die. He wanted us to have life, not death. And so he gave us everything we needed. He said, you can eat of every tree. And so we were squeezing grapes and apples and everything and making juice and not supposed to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil or we'd die. But there was this serpent that was in the garden as well. And we, we kind of, he looked scary, but we weren't scared of him because we sensed God's presence and, and we had God's life and, and we just kind of enjoyed. He was kind of our friend. And so walking around, enjoying, you know, weeding the plants, making sure things continued to grow, grow continued to grow, yeah. <laughs> and drinking. And then, um, and then one day, the serpent decided to, he decided to tell us or question what God had given us. What? 
Well, I mean, yeah, we're not we're not supposed to eat that or touch it even. Or we <laughs> we'll die. time in our lives, it was introduced that we could be God ourselves. We could decide good and evil. Like, we wouldn't need God's favor. We could have our favor in, in our own, right? And we could, you know, if, if we just decided to enjoy a drink that made us feel super happy, we could just enjoy a drink that made us feel super happy, right? Or if we wanted to just do whatever we wanted. We wouldn't have to listen to God, right? And that was a cool idea. That was really cool. We wouldn't need God. It's kind of like when your parent says, stay off the street. This thought of, I don't need my parents. I could just go on. That was really cool. It's just a piece of fruit. I mean, can't imagine it would do anything too and bad. It, like, if God was trying to hold out on us, if we could be like God, and, and he was... He was holding it away. He didn't want us to be like God. So that means he's selfish, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder what God really meant when he was saying that. Whoa, is that, is that good? Yeah, you should try some. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with that. Mm. 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 <laughs> Take another bite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really good. Mm. Letting us have that. No. But something had changed. Like something wasn't right. Some, like, all of a sudden I saw that he was naked. And it was really silly. Like, and it was, like, I was afraid. I, I was scared. My heart started pumping fast. And I, I pulled out what God had given me. And like, no more did I have, like I, I didn't sense God's joy and my heart was sad and it felt broken and I felt like something had died. I, I felt like I was suffocating and, and no longer did I, I sense that God was delighting in me and I, I didn't know what had happened, but something drastic had changed. And then I heard God, God walking in the garden and I got really scared and I just, I went and hid and and I didn't know what to do. What was God going to do? And, and I could hear him coming, and he was saying something to me. Adam. Adam. Yeah. Yes, Lord? Why are you hiding? Well, well, I was afraid of you. I, I didn't know what happened. I, I, I saw we were naked, and, and I, I thought you didn't like us anymore. Who told you that? But, uh, my my wife my wife told me that. Eve Eve she told me that. Eve who told you that? No I it was the serpent who told me that. Where is that guy? <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't my fault. And we were we were separated from God, like life had just totally shattered. No longer we we enjoyed these things. And all, all of a sudden, it just, it felt empty. And felt like, you know, I, I didn't trust my wife anymore. She, w was she being honest with me? And then she would say things to me, and I thought she was just being critical. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really want to be with her. And because we had disobeyed, God had wanted us to have life. And because we had decided we were going to get life our own way, we were told that, that we couldn't be in the garden anymore. And and God told us that we, we would have to leave the garden. And so we were sent out of the garden and we couldn't live in that garden anymore because now that we knew good and evil, we were kind of like God now. He didn't want us to, 
to eat from the tree of life and be able to live forever and live forever without him as our focus, as our enjoyment. He didn't want that to happen because if we live forever without him, nothing would turn out good because God was the source of deep satisfaction. God was the source of feeling significant. And now, now that we were now that we were without God, when I didn't feel good about myself, I would try to raise the biggest herd of cattle. How many of you have seen a herd of cattle? I would try to be the best soccer player ever. Because if, if I could be the best soccer player, then God would be proud of me again, right? And, and, but, but that didn't work. Like I would meet people that were better than me and then I'd get angry at them because they can't be better than me or God's not gonna like me. And so it just, it wasn't working. And, and I, would try to, I would try to feel happy because I, I wasn't happy inside. And I, you know, sometimes I would be, hang out with my wife and, and we'd maybe try to crack some jokes. And well, well then, like I would say a joke and it offended her and she would be upset at me and then I'd be upset at her because she's offended at my joke and we, we were no longer happy. And, and we, we, we felt the need for life, something to make us feel like the, the, the sorrow and the, the lack of significance was gone. And, you know, I, I, I got into drugs. I, I, I found weed and it, it made me feel kind of happy. But then, like, when the high would come off, I, I just need more of it. And, and I, I needed something in this world to give me life. And I would go to go to things maybe maybe alcohol or you know there was I try everything to give me a sense of life but it didn't it didn't work it was broken and all of this just made us separated we no longer had this relationship with God where where we walked and talked and we saw him and, and we had peace it was all gone but when the day that God sent us out of the garden he told us that he would send someone to crush that serpent's head. You saw Christopher's head? How many of you think that needed to be crushed? <laughs> we, we thought it was cute at first, but when all this happened, it ruined our lives. And God said, as we were going out of the garden, and he said we couldn't be there again, God said, I'm going to send someone who crushes his head and he's going to restore everything. And he's going to make so that you can have a relationship with God again. That person is Jesus. And that's what Jesus, the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Because the first Adam, me, I blew it. God had given me life. He had given me peace, relationship with him. And I blew it. And it didn't, it didn't work. But Jesus came and he began picking up. And he gives a sense of a favor. He picks up the, the, the insignificant, like our parents don't care about us. He, he, he picks up our feelings of frustration and not peace. We don't have a relationship with God. We lost our squares. Do you have them? Can we have them back? Thank you. He picks up our, our broken hearts. And scripture says that, that he wants to give us life, an abundant life. And he wants to mend our broken hearts. And he wants to declare the favor of the Lord. And Jesus does that. And the Bible tells us how Jesus does that. And we're going to continue the next few nights. The next two weeks, we're going to talk about how Jesus binds up the broken hearted how he looses the captive. We don't have to be captive to alcohol or drugs or video games or all these things we turn to to try to give us a sense of like there's something fun in this world, right? But we can't do it of ourselves. Jesus asks us to give it all to him. This bag represented responsibility. I was given all that abundance of life in the garden and I blew it. And so God as Jesus came to earth and he takes that responsibility and if we can 
just give that responsibility to Jesus. If we give it to him and let him do it, then he mends it and he's gonna heal our brokenness. He, he gives us life. It is all sewed back together again. And we have this favor with God. Through Jesus, we sense true delight and we sense life and we sense happiness in our hearts. Even though like in this world, we're still, the Bible says we still experience brokenness because there's other aspects of it that still live in corruption. But that through the Spirit of God, through Jesus Christ, we can have this whole heart again. And Jesus comes to mend that all again. And only through Jesus, we have to give it to Him. That's what these Bible stories are going to be about the next two weeks. How does Jesus give us life? Jesus is our source of life. Nothing else in this world, nothing we see, nothing we know, feel, or control is going to make us feel happy, is going to make us feel totally significant or like we're whole in life. We look to our parents. We even look. How many of you call yourself a Christian? We even look to each other as Christians to have a relationship and feel good. But we're, we're all, we're affected by the sin that Adam caused, the sin of man. And we hurt each other. And it's only through Jesus Christ that we experience that new life and that whole life. Let me pray for you guys. Father, thank you for being with us. Thank you that we can have you be seated, that we can learn more about you. And Lord, I just ask that you would open our eyes so that we can see you again. Lord, help us. If there's people here that, that feel a sense of captivity, they're bound by, maybe it's anger inside, maybe it's a bitterness at somebody in their life, they just hate them and they can't feel joy. Lord, I pray that through the next couple of weeks, they can discover joy, that they can discover your peace and your healing. Lord, if they don't feel like anybody cares about them, I pray that the next couple of weeks, they would sense like somebody cares about them and that ultimately they could come to know you care about them and you want to give them abundant life. Bless them tonight. Bless them these weeks. In Jesus' name, amen.